we, 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 you know, when we hurt, when we're sad, we do the same thing. When we're glad, we laugh. But the one thing that differentiates God's people from the rest of the world, we bow and declare that there's only one God. His name is Jesus. Amen. So if, if we make a mistake, it's forgive us because he's perfect. He's the only perfect man. If, if we say we're Christian and we cause you to see us in bad light, please forgive us. We don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody. I don't want to cause anybody, young or old, to miss the Lord. But my God is perfect. He's never known sin, and he paid the price for sin, for your sin and my sin. And without his blood, you ain't going nowhere. And the way we apply the blood, we say that, and people, how do I do that? You ask Jesus to come into your life. You can do that wherever you are. You can do it now, sitting here. We don't have to have a formal service. Amen. We will acknowledge you if you're here or you're watching us. But the way you do it, you ask Jesus to come into your life and ask him to forgive you of your sins. And tomorrow, you wake up and you do the same thing. You apply the blood. A week from now, if he lets you live, you apply the blood. Lord, Jesus, you're still my Lord. Every time you call his name, his name is a bloody name. You're telling God, I agree with your son. I don't want to see that day when your son comes and he brings, it's Jesus who's going to come and do all the retribution. We've been thinking Jesus is a little lamb. He's sitting over there. He's teary-eyed. Oh, I hate to see them go to hell, Father. No. Jesus said, I died once, and that's all I'm dying. So it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Amen. You, if you got to change your philosophy, your theology, you better get that straight. Because it's more important who you're going to marry, where you're going to live, and what you're going to drive. You, every one of us needs to settle that and keep it settled in your heart that if they, tribulation, if you're here during the tribulation, amen, and they call you to give your life, don't be no fool and for a, for a few crumbs or, or whatever, personal conveniences that God understands because he says he don't understand if you deny his son. If you got to bleed in the streets of the city you live in, you're going to wake up and go and be with the Lord. Because the time is coming when this world will see the greatest catastrophes it's ever seen. I hate to be the bearer of a message of doom and gloom, but it ain't doom and gloom to me. Amen. I'd rather know and not know. Amen. I'd rather know and not know that we got to be getting ready for in such an hour you think not the Son of Man coming. When he roll that sky back, Folk going to hit the street. You ain't going to wait till you get home and call somebody and say, girl, what, look what I seen. You're gonna, they going to hit the streets right there on Martin Luther King Boulevard. All of Martin Luther King Boulevards. They're going to drop to the knees. They're going to run and hide if they don't have the blood of Jesus on them. God can see the blood of Jesus. Now, I'm not getting into when the rapture is and all of that, but there will be people on this earth that love Jesus and the day of the Lord. That's why the great tribulation is coming. And Christians are going to be killed. I got news for you as I close. You've been told Christians, all us Cheerio, uh, uh, Fruit Loop eating Christians, you know, cereal. We won't take no meat. Amen. You know, uh, we, God don't want us to ever bleed. You know, we say, ow. You know, somebody looked at us funny. I got news for you. This Bible that I just read to you. Jesus just said, there's a day coming before I come back where it's going to be worse than any, anything that Hitler done at the Holocaust. Satan is going to kill Christians by the truckloads. So I'm telling you now, you've been called in this army of the Lord Jesus, not this church, but in the army of the Lord Jesus to die. Your Savior died on a cross for you. He bled and died. But somehow we've been sold a bill of goods that we don't have to give our life. And the Bible says you have not resisted sin under blood. 
In other words, there's no sin that's common to man that God will not make a way of escape for. He won't put on you more than you can handle. I don't care how juicy the pear, how juicy the apple, God makes a way of escape. Yes, he does. Then he says there's not a sin in your life that you have resisted, any of you, unto blood. The blood that calls the pays for redemption. But I did. God got tired of seeing goats and bulls, bullocks, turtle doves being killed. You say, why did, why did, what that has to do with anything? Something innocent has to die for the guilty to appease this God. He's the only one that can make that dot of blood. And when man sinned, he had to look around and say, I got to take something that's innocent, something that has nothing to do with this sin, that that price has got to be paid. He set the whole system up. And the way the system works is that every sin has to be accounted for. Every sin. That means that if it's not under the blood, it's sticking out. You know, women, you work on your hair, then you got one wild hair sticking up like alfalfas. It's got to be accounted for. You either snip it off or you buy another wig. Every sin has to be accounted for. And the only way to erase the slate of sin in our life, Jesus paid the price for me. But if you accumulate new sins, you need to apply the blood. See, that's what you're talking about. I'm closing now. He died for you, but every time you commit sin, you need to say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. You're applying the blood. You don't put grease in your hair one time. You put it in every time you need to. The wash it. It's getting dry. You got a wound. You, you don't put it one time. Apply the blood. That's the only way you're going to make it in. Because that's a constant fellowship. Walking with me. He said, die daily. So somewhere you say, Lord, forgive me. He knows every sin. It's not what goes in the heart, in the mouth that defiles a man. It's what come out. You've got to practice that. Because if you don't, you're going unwashed. And then he comes in a day when you would just load it down, and you might think you smell good, but all God can see, you don't have any blood on you. And wrath hits you. You can tell him about your religion, how you don't believe in him, but you find me a better book that can describe the end time, I'm going to follow it. Find me a book that can beat this, whatever your religion is. And I've studied bunches of them and joined a bunch of their Day coats looking for the truth. From Jehovah Witness to Latter day Saint, all of them. I've been to their places and I was going to be one of them. But this is the only book that got the truth from the, from the beginning to the end. And this is the only book when I read the words that terrify me. The rest of it, all that old stuff in there to sound like somebody that had a problem with poetry. This is the only book. I'm trying to keep this. I ain't, this ain't joke time, man. I'm talking about people going to hell. Y'all quit laughing. <laughs> but that's what it is. Old, po old book, somebody didn't pass poetry class. Trying to write all this old jive time stuff. That book right there, that shake me up. Stand on your feet. The truth going to set you free. Some folks be talking about God ain't no hell. <laughs> okay. This hell right here on earth. Man, this is a picnic. It's a walk in the park. You know how many people sleeping in their graves if they had the opportunity to come back and just have one day? They wouldn't run, get, get a good meal somewhere. They'd run to an altar. As soon as God popped them up on the, on the other side of the grave, they'd hit the knees and say, Lord, forgive me my sins. You can kill me now. People are departing this life every day who are saying they don't need Jesus. Young people, young men, young women, old men. They're shaking their finger at God's people and God's church. A bunch of churches, 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 people and people. And God is saying, you just keep on talking. Because see, a day 
to the Lord is like a thousand years. So he lets you live out your little 50, 60, 70 years and think you're smart and you're going to do something. And, and a 70 divided into a thousand ain't nothing but a few human days as far as God is concerned. So you sell all the wolf tickets, but you're going to stay in your place and you, you're looking for a place that you don't have to feel bad. You better get over that bad feeling and make peace with God. Because the only way you're going to make peace with God, children, is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you're my Lord and my Savior. I'm sorry today for what I've done. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for how I said it. I'm sorry for the sin that I, I'm doing. I need you to help me for the sin that I'm so easily beset by. Come on. There's mercy in that. I'm trying to lay aside this sin and this weight. But, Lord, I, I keep on running back to the same old stuff. So I'm asking you to help me. Because, see, on that day of the Lord, I want to have that settled. God will give you, man, he'll give you time. But don't play him. He said, don't tempt me. Don't say I'm going to take the next 10 years and just, you know, walk on the wild side. Because the Lord says that the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Tomorrow's not promised to you. You get cut off. You eat something and die. Get disease and you die. And ain't no coming back. And there's not a sin that we have done or you've done that the Lord don't have a remedy for. And it's the blood of Jesus. I don't care if you're in the penitentiary for murder. I don't care if you've been an abuser. I mean, of whoever and whatever. You can ask God to forgive you. Man may not forgive you, but you need to ask God to forgive you in the name of Jesus. Come on. Doesn't matter what church you go to and how much you work. If you don't keep applying the blood of Jesus, sin will take hold of your heart. God's going to bring down everybody who's haughty, who's proud, who's arrogant. Those are all sins. And then the secret sins that we carry around. Amen. Because we're humans and we think nobody sees me. We need to learn how to come to a loving God who's saying, it's not my will that any should perish, but if you don't get your sins under the blood, I'm going to have to reject you. Receiving Christ back then is not going to be a cure-all if you decide to change and run and go back with the devil. So it's a lie. Well, I know he washed my sins, so I'm good. No, what he's saying is, it's because of my grace and my mercy that you are not consumed. That I don't allow you to terminate this life in your present condition. So every day of your life, you need to apply the blood of Jesus and you call his name in sickness, in distress, when you're going through a divorce, when you're going through separation, loss of loved ones, despair, discouragement, suicidal spirits, amen, addictions, whatever they are, the Lord loves you in spite of those things. But the only way to take command of your life is to invite Christ in. And when you call up, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and delivered. So he put the responsibility on you. I go to church. It's not what he said. Whosoever go to church. I do good works. No, he said, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And on the day of wrath, that's going to be the difference between night and day because those people that I showed you and anybody living, they're going to have a choice. They're going to raise their hand and God's going to take them out of here, relieve their suffering, or they're going to say, hide us from the face of him because I still refuse to bow. His mean self. He's come to kill us. All they had to do was drop to the knees and say, Jesus, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I'm rich. I'm a captain. But what they say, hide us. Hide us. You know why? Because they're determined I'm still going to be a rebel. He's a merciful God. And that's the reason you're here today. Because he wants you to receive his grace. And I'm not talking about here in this church, but here on earth. So praise the Lord. Let's have a prayer right now for those of you who are here, and those who may be listening or watching, because we want to ask the Lord to receive us every day 
into his kingdom. The kingdom of God is now. Jesus brought the kingdom of God. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray with me in your way. And we ask you to forgive us of all of our sin. We ask you, Father, to forgive us of our transgressions. And Lord, we confess to you that we need you to save us. We confess to you that there is no other God besides thee. We confess to you that we don't know everything, but this much we know is because of your mercies we are not consumed. We thank you for another day. We thank you for putting up with us when we are rebellious, even long seasons of disobedience. We thank you for the air that you let us breathe and the breath in our body. We thank you for healing our bodies, keeping us from sickness and disease. And we thank you that when we are sick, you are still our healer. When diseases do come to us, plagues do come to us, you are our healer. Thank you for medicine. Thank you for the medical field. But most of all, we thank you for your son who died on a cross. Come on in your way. Talk with me. We thank you for your son who died on a cross for our lives, for our souls, to bring eternity to us, Lord. We could not reach you, so you came down to reach us. And so today, Father, I give my life to you. Come on, if you're in agreement, you can do it now. I give my life to you. I dedicate my life to you. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my body. I know that I've kept parts of those things for myself, but I give them to you. I know I'm a work in progress. I know I'm going to have to make some changes. There's some people in my life that I'm going to have to cut out or some people that needs to come in or there's some things that I'm going to have to do differently. But I'm asking you for the grace. Come on, pray with me for a moment to help me, to guide me, to direct me. Oh God, for it's you and you alone that I have sinned against. And I know that one day, whether living or dead, I'm going to have to stand before you and give an account of this life. So I'm coming in Jesus' name. Help me not to try to find shortcuts to love both you and the world. But help me settle it in my heart that you and you alone are who I live for. Thank you for my family, for my friends, for my church family, for my friends and my people that I know, acquaintances. But Lord, help me most of all to honor you. And so I make a confession right now before all of the demons in the world, in the air, to the prince and power of this air, I decree that there's only one Lord, and his name is Jesus. I will not bow to you. Even if I do, Mr. Mark, I'm going to get up and call up on Jesus. For Satan, you are not my Lord. Come on, you need to open your mouth and talk. It don't work if you don't say it. But Satan, you are not my God. My God is named Jesus. My God sits on the throne. And through the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I can do all things. I'm going to be ready when he come. I'm going to be ready when he come. This appointment I cannot afford to miss. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for receiving me and washing me. Come on, just lift your hands and thank him. That's how you apply the blood. Thank you for washing me. Every one of my sins is blotted out. Come on, make your confession. All of my sins have been washed away. Come on. That's how you get under the blood, children. Come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say it. That's what the Bible says. You, you're not just saying it to me. You're saying it to the spiritual entities that want you to forget. I don't care what you did and what you've been into, but all of my sins have been paid for. That's proof right there that the cross, somebody had to die for me, and his name is Jesus. That's how you wash yourself in the blood. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy always. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now, one more time, come on. Come on, sing it like you believe it now. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am always. Thank you for Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him just a minute. Hallelujah. 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 That means praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because he died for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, come on. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Yes, he is, come on. You are worthy. Tell him, come on. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Yes, you are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Thank him because he died for your sins and mine. Hallelujah. 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 One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him, everybody. There ain't but one Savior in the world. His name is Jesus, yeah. Only one Savior, and his name is Jesus, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're not ashamed, why don't you sing with us? Come on, lift up your voice like the angels. Come on, if you're not ashamed, say hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Nobody but you, Lord, paid the price for my life. I just want to say hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, that's the highest praise. I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed to say. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Just wave your hands. Amen. The angels are in the room right now. Praise the Lord, the ministry of spirits. And they are taking this spiritual sacrifice to the very throne of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, in spite of my circumstances, I say. In spite of my situation, I say. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Forget not his benefits. Hallelujah. Glory. Now listen, we're going to take a moment here and we're going to just offer up a prayer. We've got some family that is uh, ill right now. They're taking their healing, actually. Amen. They're healed by the stripes of Jesus, but they're taking their healing right now. Come on, they're taking their healing. Hallelujah. The bi their bodies may not know it, but they're already healed. Can you say amen? And then there may be somebody that you know that needs uplifting right now. We're going to take a moment to just to pray as we close out here. want to remember Larry. Amen. Brother Larry, sister. Uh, uh, Evangelist Orr's husband, he lost his best friend and uh, that family that lost their son. Amen. And anybody else, praise the Lord, that is in your heart. We're not going to ask you for those names right now. People in your heart right now, children, family members, co-workers, people sick, lost. We're going to close this out with a prayer. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Again, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, but we pray for our family who's taking healing. We don't call them sick, Lord, because by your stripes they're healed. So we ask you, Lord, to bring comfort to their lives, protection to their lives. Oh, God, we pray for those who are in the hospitals, those who are in sick places, those who have recently buried loved ones. God, those who have loved ones, Lord, who are, are soon to expire. We ask you to bring hope, bring joy, bring peace. Those, Lord, who are grieving in any way, those who are suffering, God, in the name of Jesus, give them all grace so that they can say now and forever, hallelujah to the King. If it were not for the Lord on their side, where would they be? So we ask you in Jesus' name, bring speedily recovery to them. And then finally, we ask you to keep a hedge of protection about all those who are present with us here today. Protect their minds, their bodies, their spirits, their finances, their health, their wealth, their children, the fruit of their loin, the fruit of their wound, in the name of Jesus. And then reveal yourself to them in greater measures, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, we give you honor. In Jesus' holy name, let everybody say. Shout amen. Shout hallelujah. Come on. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. Amen. Before we leave, amen. Pastor Lee, come. Come up and thank God for Pastor Lee. He's been through surgery, but you can't tell it. Superman. All right, praise the Lord. We thank God for the word. And for the man of God bringing the word. Amen. And we must be ready when he comes. And we have to work on it every day.